Welcome to the Monday, May 7, 2018, special meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. May we please pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could we please have the roll call? Chairman Sullivan? Here. Councilor Garvin? Here. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Here. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Here. Councilor Lennon? Councilor Randall? Here. And Councilor Straw? Here. Thank you. Our first item is our public hearing on fiscal year 2019 budget. And before I open the public hearing, I have a few things to say. First of all, I want to remind everyone of the rules of the quorum for all our meetings. Please conduct yourself with civility, have respect for others. There shall be no comments, applause, or disapproval of any kind expressed by anyone in chambers when anyone else is speaking at the podium or here at the council. <clears throat> and before we begin, I want to uh, point out that tonight is a public hearing. And after the public hearing, we will entertain tabling the town council and school budget to May 14. The reason we do this is we separate, we've had a tradition of separating the public hearing with the actual vote. The reason is we want to be able to dedicate a full evening to the public hearing so that we can hear from many people. If we were to combine both in the same evening, it could be a 2 a.m. evening. This way, we can dedicate tonight to all of you who want to come and speak to us. It gives us a week to absorb all the comments as we prepare for a week from tonight, Monday 14, when we will vote on the numbers that go to the ballot in June. So at this moment, I would like to go ahead and convene the public hearing. All those who would like to speak, please come to the podium. You have three minutes. Please give us your name and address. Uh, my name's David Hellman, 22 Cranbrook Drive in Cape Elizabeth. I've been a Cape resident for about 25 plus years, school board person for six years. I have three basic points. Um, I read the budgets, I read the analysis that have been circulating around town, but there's a single set of two figures that struck me as being the most relevant. The state of Maine cut the revenue, the state revenue to, to the schools by 890,000, about 900,000. Our expenditures increased by about 750. We wouldn't have asked, the, the, excuse me, I'm too used to saying we when I mean the school board. Um, school board wouldn't have asked for a tax increase if it hadn't been for the state of Maine. We should blame the state of Maine for this. Put the blame where it is. It's not on the schools, not on the school board, it's not on, certainly not on the students, it's not on the town council, it's the state of Maine. We're being forced to make up for their cut to the state funding. Um, and I don't think that, I think we need to do that. The school referendum law, which I was somewhat involved in, basically envisioned that school budgets are ultimately gonna approve by the voters. And I think historically the town council has always had an important role in it, but unless there were some obvious flaws in the school budget that they thought they needed to remedy, they basically took the position, I thought, let the voters decide. And I think that's what you should do. I think you should vote to approve it and let the voters decide. They'll say whether it's too high or too low or whatever. Uh, but I think, I want to end on one point. I think this is something that this town and its citizens and the town council and the school board could do. We had a $160 million increase in education funding this summer. $160 million. How is it that Cape Elizabeth gets cut by a million? And I think that the reason is, is that we need to, um, they rejiggered the state funding formula in a way, obviously, that hurt towns with a high residential tax structure. We can't allow that to happen. We should band together by at the citizen level, the school board level, the town council level, and with our representatives say no more. We need to get um, equity in our public funding. And that's not that we pay a ton of money to the state and we get almost nothing in return. I think what we need to do is to start citizen groups, 
get the school board and the town council to work with other schools in southern Maine and on the coast, and let's hold up some votes in the state legislature until we get more equity in our funding. That's the solution, not denying the school board's request. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Mary Ann Lynch. I live at Old Colony Lane. I've been a resident in Cape Elizabeth for 34 years. I won't repeat what uh, David has said, so I'll just keep my remarks very brief. I sat with you, it, it sat there uh, many years ago and faced a very uh, similar size cut in terms of the magnitude of the cut at the time. In 2002, we were looking at a $500,000 cut. Unfortunately, state law at that time did not uh, allow for the school budget to go out to referendum. So um, my colleagues and I had to sit there and figure out what was best for the town, what would be most acceptable, how do you reach a compromise. I think in light of, especially in light of the fact that but for the size of the cut, I think everyone would be saying, school board, you did a great job, and they did do a great job, and you all have done a tremendous job. The best thing that you can do is to put the school board's uh, budget, which they've worked very hard on, out to a, a vote, as has been contemplated by the law in the last 10 years. So I would encourage you to adopt that budget and put it out to a vote. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Good evening. My name is Susanna Mazel hubbs and I live at 18 Belfield Road. I want to thank the entire town council and town manager for the time and commitment they have given in creating a budget that scope is forward thinking, responsible, and considerate of all the many different assets the town of Cape Elizabeth is blessed with. I'm here tonight as a parent, community member, and chairwoman of the school board to speak in support of the current municipal and school budget on behalf of the children of Cape Elizabeth. They are truly this town's most important asset in which every single one of us must be responsible for. I know that we can all agree on this. The school administration and superintendent have worked on the school budget for the past six months. This year's budget, which leans on the taxpayers more than anybody would want, is a true compromise. Because of a third year of extreme cuts from the state, the school department has been forced to negotiate against itself, trading one service over another or one goal for the next. This is not where we wish we were, but it is where we are. We are at a crossroads, and the community of Cape Elizabeth must decide what they value most and what they want to prioritize. We must also recognize that a new approach to funding education is essential. We can no longer be at the state's mercy and hope for the best. If education is what this town truly values, we must truly commit to it. In my mind, it is clear that the school board and town council must work together and approach funding education as a town responsibility, not just the taxpayers. I would like to propose the formation of a joint committee between school board, town councilors, and community members to begin strategizing new ways to fund education locally, starting right after the June referendum. I believe that this town truly values education, and I know that we can and we will find a new path forward. It is so important, and I promise to do my part, knowing that it will not always be easy. Speaking of which, I want to acknowledge the questions the citizen raised and provide the public with as much clarity as possible. A complete set of responses have been shared with the town council and now are available for the public to access by visiting the school website, selecting school board on the drop down menu, then navigating to the May 8, 2018 meetings and material link, materials link. The school board has also included this as an item for discussion during the next regular school board meeting, which is being held here tomorrow night. I encourage anyone and everyone to look at the responses, attend our meeting tomorrow night, and let us know if you have any further questions. Though the questions raised by one citizen do not directly relate to this year's budget, the answers do underscore that each of the seven elected school board members are deeply committed and duty bound to present a budget that provides our children with the best educational experience possible, come what may. This year's school budget offers the best compromise between maintaining an excellent education system that meets the needs of all children 
and minimizes the impact to taxpayers as much as possible. If you could wrap up your comments, your time is up. Deciding which needs deserve the greatest attention and which can be delayed has been a gut-wrenching process. But this is the charge of the school board. Therefore, with the utmost respect to the citizens of this town and the promise to provide a public education befitting of any child in any town in any of the United States, I ask that you support the municipal and school budgets as they stand. Thank you, Town Council, for all that you do on behalf of the children. Good evening. My name is Sherm Altenberg, and my wife Bev and I uh, live at 13 Stone Ridge Road. I'm here to speak in support of the town contributing to the land trust purchase of Robinson Woods III. I've been a resident of Cape Elizabeth for 49 years. Both of our children, their spouses, and our five grandchildren live here too. We love and enjoy all of Cape's open spaces. In the spirit of full disclosure, I'm also a volunteer for and contributor to the Land Trust. Last fall, I had the opportunity to send a self-fundraising letter to an acquaintance who still has an interest in some property close to Robinson Woods, too. They live out of state. In that letter, I shared my rationale for our support of the Land Trust, and I'd like to share part of that letter with you. It goes as follows. We, Bev and I, hear from many groups asking for our support. Over time, CELT has risen to the top of our list because they are local, tangible, active year-round, good for the environment, a tremendous resource for the schools and the town's entire population. Every day, we see the results of their work around every corner. It's good to know the lands will be cared for in perpetuity, end of quote. Over time, I know our grandchildren will appreciate your support of this purchase, and I hope their grandchildren will too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lauren Glennon, and I live at Three Garden Circle. Thank you for having us this evening. Whether in person or by recorded video, I've witnessed your tireless work over the past months as this budget vote approached. I have three young children, twins in first grade, and a future pond goer entering kindergarten next year. On their behalf, I appreciate your time and care as you plan for our school and our town's future. And in fact, our children are the reason that I'm here tonight. I've been unable to attend and speak before tonight due to all things homework, hot dogs, messy faces, medicine, bedtime songs, and bedtime stories. And like me, I'd like to take an important moment to mention those residents who either can't be here tonight or who need to leave early to make their own family's bedtimes or tomorrow's Chewanke school trip. In, in an attempt to demonstrate to you the number of residents and families out there who support this budget, we circulated a letter of support. Right now, I'd love to see anyone who signed that letter of support raise their hand to show that whether they're physically here, watching from home, or with us in spirit, there are over 424 residents in total united tonight to support our school's currently proposed budget. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, oh, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> I'm also here to voice my personal support mm -hmm. for the proposed budget. I know the budget concessions that were made to get to this current fairly bare budget. This budget is majorly to maintain what we have, only a 3.1% increase over last year's budget, and less than average budget increases over the last 10 years. The three things that comprise the budget increase are contractual obligations, like teacher salaries and healthcare. In, healthcare one new custodian and a feasibility study for minimally cost-effective building maintenance and a safety redesign. We should be upset about what's not in this budget, but instead we're urging you to approve it because we're dealing with a drastic funding cut from the state, almost 900,000 this year. I'm a board member of the PCPA and I've seen the impact of the decreased state funding over the past two years in little ways, like the types of grants that are submitted to the PCPA by teachers because they know it won't be in the school budget. They've asked, I've asked. And coming soon, the Pond Cove Playground is a big example of that. 
possibly $300,000 of a playground re renovation project for Pond Cove was taken out of this proposed budget and instead brought to parents to fundraise. So I support the budget because I know how bare it is, but I also support what's in it. We need to maintain our student, or excuse me, our teacher contracts. We need clean schools, and I support the feasibility study included. I attended the town council session on April 30th to understand the feasibility study. And as some background, my career today has been managing capital projects for nonprofits like museums. I understood the presentation and the complexity well, and the point was well made during the session that maintaining our facilities is more cost effective in the long run rather than soon enough beginning to plan for new buildings. Some of the maintenance work in there has already been put off and the actual construction, whatever is decided. Mrs. Glenn, and your time is up. Please wrap up your comments. Thank you. Won't be done for five years. So to conclude, I wanted to thank you for the work I've seen between you and the school board so far. I heard you hear that, like our peer schools, Cape Elizabeth needed an SRO, and I know that's in the budget from the town this year. In the same vein, I hope you can follow through with the long-term planning committee I heard you discuss with the school board so that the town and school can move forward planning strategically for new funding solutions. You have an engaged and motive mobilized public. We're informed and won't disappear. Thank you, Mrs. Glennon. You. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sarah Safer Estes. I live on Campion Road. I have a third grader and a preschooler right over there. Um, in addition to being a parent, I'm a resident who grew up in Cape Elizabeth, went through our outstanding school system, and decided to return to my hometown to raise my children. The reason I chose Cape Elizabeth out of all the towns and cities in this country to raise my own children was because of our close-knit community, strong values, and excellent schools. In the Cape Elizabeth I have always known, we have been proud of our outstanding schools, and we have constantly been striving to adjust and improve upon them. We have done so because we have believed that providing our children with the best possible education will open the doors to their futures, doors they may walk through to pursue their dreams. I know 54 Cape Elizabeth High School classmates who graduated within a few years of me who also made the choice to return to Cape Elizabeth and currently have children in our schools. This is a powerful testament to our town's enduring history of excellence. That said, I think that in recent years we have become accustomed to excellence in every aspect of our town and that we have begun to expect it rather than actively work to nourish it. The reality is that we have lost over $2 million in state funding for our schools over the last three years alone. We expect our town to remain beautiful and rural, so we allow very few businesses in to contribute taxes that could easily offset this challenge. Here's what I don't understand. We all tell our children that in order to excel, they need to be dedicated, persistent, and put forth their very best effort, fully invest in their goals because we know that being outstanding or even great is not something that is just given to us. It requires investment. So how can we expect the same level of excellence from our schools and the same amount of opportunity for our children without investing in them? How can we live up to our reputation as one of the top schools in Maine if we refuse to commit to making it so? I'd also like to speak from the perspective of a career elementary school teacher. I have had the sacred responsibility of teaching our youngest learners, grades pre-K through three, at Pond Cove, in Falmouth, in Castroville, California, on Munjoy Hill, and in Lisbon, Maine. And I say with the utmost confidence that adequate attention and support make all the difference in student success in the early years of learning. Things like keeping class sizes small so that our youngest learners get the individual attention they need and deserve, having educational technicians in classrooms for managing many little bodies and helping those who struggle, having literacy and math specialists who make sure that every child is proficient in basic skills before the intense academic demands of upper elementary school and beyond begin. These are the very things that we risk losing in Cape Elizabeth if our budget continues to be reduced. <coughs> Teaching in communities with limited resources, I learned that it was not possible to give children the education they deserved. It was not that parents loved their children less or that these towns didn't have high hopes for their students. It was about financial resources. We lacked the funds for the specialized staff and the support staff necessary to meet students' developmental, academic, and behavioral needs. Children needed help in order to be ready to learn and then to learn that simply didn't exist. The doors were closed for these children. Excuse me, say for your time is up. Could you wrap up your comments? We in Cape Elizabeth are fully able to provide the essentials to ensure that every child has an open door to their future. Tonight, to be clear, we are talking about consciously deciding to undermine the right of every one of our children to learn. 
Are we so focused on dollars and cents that we are willing to jeopardize our children's futures? Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nicoletta Coop, and I live on Mitchell Road. Could you, restate, could you restate your name, please? I didn't hear it. <laughs> um, my name is Nicoletta Coop. I live on 345 Mitchell Road. I'm currently a freshman at the high school, and I'm here today, today to speak in support of the proposed budget. I've been in the Cape Elizabeth school system since kindergarten, and it's where my love of root... It's where my love of learning, reading, and school was born. Throughout the years, I've had excellent teachers who fostered my curiosity and interests, challenging me through the ability to work one-on-one -on -one or just in a smaller setting. I know that with budget cuts, it's possible that teaching staff will be minimized, leading to larger class sizes. This will leave teachers with less capacity to meet students' individual, individual learning speeds and levels, which can only serve as a detriment to every student's classroom experience. Furthermore, I'm involved in a diverse set of activities at the high school, such as debate team, Model UN, World Affairs Council, improv, and athletics. These extracurriculars give me the ability to pursue my interests outside of school with other like-minded peers. Um, they are a good example of the uniqueness of Cape Elizabeth High School, as few other schools offer such a wide, wide range of programs for their students. It should also be acknowledged that CAPE has a rich history of success and recognition in these areas, with students winning awards at Model UN, state championships on the debate team, and holding many high-ranking athletic seasons. If activities like these face budget cuts, it would not only leave many students without the ability to go after their passions, but take away from CAPE Elizabeth High School's interactive and involved community. It is because of my love for school that I urge you to support the school budget. Thank you, town council and school, board, and school board members for your time and consideration. Thank you. Good evening, counselors. My name is Ella Stanley. My name is Ella Stanley, and I live at 10 Abaco Drive, and I'm a freshman at the high school. When I moved here the summer before kindergarten, a decision made by my parents because of the excellent schools in Cape Elizabeth, my brothers were in sixth and third grade, respectively. I watched them go through middle school, then high school, doing musicals, improv, photography class, ceramics, and theater. Watching them participate in these programs made me excited to get older and go through the Cape schools so I could do it too. One of my brothers, a current senior, is going to college next year and plans to study film. In high school, he took two electives that fueled his passion for the subject, film and media studies and his student-driven learning class in which we, he had the opportunity to write and direct a short film. I have a love of theater and music. I took advantage of every acting and singing opportunity throughout middle school and I've continued to do so in my freshman year. I have wanted a career in which I can do these activities professionally for, the, for most of my life. The teachers and mentors that have guided me have been a big factor in my love of these art forms. It's no wonder they were so excellent because Cape Elizabeth is one of two schools in Maine recognized nationally for their music programs. It's one reason the schools are unique. As many of you probably know, arts programs are often the first to go when budgets are cut. I would like to stress that these programs are what makes this school unique, special, and enjoyable for students. I urge you to support this budget in order to support the future of our students and the future of our town. Thank you, Council, for your time. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Ella Bryman. I live at 997 Shore Road, and I am a current freshman at Cape Elizabeth High School. My family moved here three years ago primarily because of the high quality of schools. I am here tonight advocating for the proposed budget and for Cape Elizabeth's foreign language programs. Classes like Spanish, French, and Latin are sometimes considered outside of core subjects, which is why I'm concerned that these programs could be put in jeopardy. It is important that we sustain the incredible education that Cape Elizabeth schools offer. Foreign language is a significant part of this, and it is because our students start at the age of seven or eight that many are able to graduate with a level six understanding and comprehension of their language. The world is very rapidly changing and growing, and soon English will not be enough to support the young adults of today, even in America. 
Depriving students of a foreign language education deprives them of the ability to make their voices heard around the world. In supporting this budget, you support the students, the schools, and the future of Cape Elizabeth. Members of the council, thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. Hi, my name is Genevieve Rada. I'm a freshman at Cape Elizabeth High School and I live on Two Mace Field Terrace. I have a little sister and a twin brother. My brother has ADHD, which has definitely affected both his ability to learn and how he learns. If the school budget is cut and teachers are eliminated, it will directly affect class sizes. Growing up with him, I've noticed how class size matters and how well students learn. Different students need more attention from teachers to reach the same level of learning as their peers. Throughout the years, my brother and I have had a variation of class sizes and one thing was constant. When we had the opportunity to more one-on-one -on -one time with our teachers, our school experience was much better. Diane Whitmore, a Northwest University associate professor, said the mechanisms at work linking small classes to higher achievements include a mixture of higher levels of student engagement, increased time on task, and the opportunity small classes provide for high quality teachers to better tailor their instructions to the students in the class. All students in Cape Elizabeth deserve the chance for an outstanding education. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Sylvia Crawford and I live at 470 Mitchell Road and I am a freshman at Cape Elizabeth High School. My family moved here eight years ago for the excellent school systems. We've seen in the media and the government recently kids standing up for themselves and issues they believe in and affect them directly. It's at this point when children have to start acting like adults you, when you know a crucial job is not getting done. I am proud to stand up for my school, teachers, and peers in favor of the proposed school budget, not just because I love the programs our school has to offer, but I love our school in general and what sets us apart from other schools such as Cumberland and Yarmouth. Our schools offer economic, cl economics classes, Holocaust studies, personal finance, and guitar, which are all things that could potentially stand out on a college application. Members of the town council and members of this town will be voting on a number that will directly affect me and my peers' education and gateway to the rest of our lives. I, being 15, am not allowed to vote for what I believe in, so I am standing here in front of you asking you to vote in favor of the students as an investment in the future of our students and in as, as an investment in the future of this town. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Maddie Simopoulos. I live on 1175 Shore Road and I'm a seventh grader. As a student in this community, it is my right to get the best education for my future role in this society. A solid school budget is a way for us pupils to get the education and opportunities to discover different interests in our school careers and to succeed. If we cut down on our school budget, especially extracurricular activities, it will have detrimental effects to my education, which could affect my ability to get into college of my dreams, Harvard. Without approving the proposed budget, there will be cuts to music, foreign language, and most worrisome technology, which, let's face it, it's the future. All these activities can help kids like me get into better colleges and some, like sports, can help kids stay on the right path and stop them from getting into trouble. And what about our loving role models that are teachers? Without the proposed budget, 10 to 15 of them could lose their job. And let's not forget the biggest problem, property value. With a great education system, your property will decline. This affects everyone, whether you have a kid in school or not. My parents picked Cape when we moved here because of the school system, and now with the budget cuts, the school value will go down, and your property value will go down with it. With these cuts, what will be the outcome? It's not good. Please support this proposed budget. Thank you. My name is Stella Crawford. I live at 470 Mitchell Road, and I'm in seventh grade. Yeah, there you go. I moved to Cape Elizabeth when I was five. My dad works an hour away, so the commute is pretty long. The only reason we live, so far, we live so far away is because my parents wanted us to go to a great school, and this is one of the best in the state. I've gone through every grade from kindergarten to seventh. Of course, over the course of being here, I've built amazing relationships with my teachers. Every year, it's as, it's as if you get a new adult who helps raise you, an adult who helps pushes, pushes, pushes you to be better, an adult that's part of your life for the next 10 months. I've noticed that here at Cape, every teacher teaches a little differently. It's a different experience with every teacher. The second we start taking those teachers away, our children are losing the perfect opportunity and experience to learn. I'm standing here asking you to not let this happen. I'm asking you not to let the education of our children get thrown away in the process of the school budget. 
So please vote to approve the school budget and our education will not be put at risk. And in the end, I promise we are all worth it. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Kitty DeRusso, and uh, I've only lived in Cape Elizabeth for two years. <laughs> um, we came here to retire, my husband and I. We're from Southern California, and this is quite a change. But I have to say, I could not be happier and prouder uh, than to be part of this community. This is truly a community, and coming from a state like California, which I love, uh, this is a great experience. Listening to these kids come before me, you know, I feel pretty humbled. Um, and they are products of your school system here. Um, obviously, they are, uh, they demonstrate what an outstanding school system you ha we have here. So I think that for myself, you know, I think investing in education is the most important investment of all. You know, as, as a people, we invest in so many things that seem so much less important to me than education, which I would say is number one. And so to keep this community great, you want to keep great schools. Uh, you know, and I say this as a newcomer, but also, as I said, as a very proud new member of this community. I believe we should put this up for a vote to the people, and I feel safe doing that with my particular position because I've lived here long enough to get to know the people of Cape Elizabeth, and I'm almost certain that they would want to keep the quality of these schools high. Um, it's, it's, a ha it's part of what makes Cape Elizabeth Cape Elizabeth. And... Um, so I, I hope that that's the decision that you'll make and let the people and the community of this town tell us what kinds of schools that they want in their community. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sandy Shapiro Hurt and I live at 75 Oakhurst Road. And thank you all for sitting where you are tonight. I know this is a lot of work. I have a fourth grade daughter and a new small business here. My husband and I lived in a beautiful neighborhood where we were very happy in South Portland. We moved here when it was time for our daughter to start kindergarten. Cape Elizabeth is a beautiful town, but really no more beautiful than many towns in Maine. We don't have much of a downtown shopping district or a vibrant harbor or a mountain range for skiing and hiking, but what we do have are exceptional schools. It is our school system that sets us apart from the dozens of other picturesque districts in this state, and it's something we should be proud of and protect. Aside from what I believe is our social responsibility to invest in education and the future of our kids and our country, we should not underestimate the value our schools have for our community as a whole and our ability to maintain property values and the ability for small businesses to survive. We have a lot here, but not enough to sustain the massive draw that young families feel when they're looking for a place to move without keeping our schools in a top-rated position. I feel like our school board is very talented, our interim superintendent is very talented, and I think that they know what it will take to keep us in that top-rated position. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Melinda Nudd and I live at Three Rocky Hill Road. First, I wanna thank each of you as well for all that you do and for your service and commitment to our town. Uh, I'm here to support sending the increased school budget as it's been developed by the school board to the citizens of this town to vote. As a tax paying member of this town and as citizens of a larger democratic society, it is our vote, it is our right to either vote for or against the increased spending that it will take to sustain and support our school at the current operating level. Additionally, as a fourth grade public school teacher in Biddeford, I value education deeply. I struggle every single day. I see teachers struggling every single day and students, all because we don't have the proper resources we need to do our jobs. We are living in a post-industrial <coughs> democratic society where we're preparing students for careers that don't even yet exist. Cutting essential teaching positions, increasing classroom sizes, and removing special and culturally diverse programs is a huge step in the wrong direction. The budget that's been proposed by the school board does not include new staff or additional supports. It's simply what we need to get through. The current administration in Augusta has clearly turned its back on Cape Elizabeth, but I'm hopeful that we'll see new administration changes in November that will reverse course. 
Uh, I've recently heard many people saying Fort Williams is our biggest asset and that we need to protect it. I believe, as many do here tonight, that our children are our biggest asset and we need to protect them. I think we've seen tonight all of the amazing kids that are coming out of the school system um, and they just blow my mind. I encourage you all to attend sporting events, go to drama productions, go to the robotics team, attend mock UN nation or debate club sessions. They are going to do great things in this world, but as the adults, it's our job to provide the resources they need to make them happen. For this coming school year, I support the increased taxes because I believe we need to come together to make up for the shortfall that the state has imposed on us. This is not the children's burden to bear. So I believe that the town council should move this recommended budget forward so that we get a chance to vote on it and make our voices heard. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Chairwoman Sullivan and fellow council members, thank you for being here tonight and all that you do. At last week's meeting, I heard a number of you express questions regarding this budget. I hope that you've received answers, and if not, I hope that tomorrow night's meeting can provide them. In today's contentious political climate, how can a well-educated, sophisticated community like ours make ourselves different? To get to choose our own path, and although we may not all agree on each direction we take, we can set our own tone. I choose to listen to my neighbors and respect their perspectives. I choose to care for those that surround me. I choose to work together, and I choose to trust each other and believe that all of our, sorry, I can't read my writing. <laughs> all of our credible, ded, or, sorry, incredible, dedicated volunteer council members and school board members are doing their best to make this town as strong and unique a place as they can. I had a personal experience that provided insight to why some of the decisions last year were made. And although these decisions were difficult, our school is better for having made them. Last year's survey was taken and showed that 76% of our teachers didn't have faith in the administration. In any business, if 76% of the workforce lacked confidence in management, stakeholders would have to make a change. I've recently given Cape Elizabeth a lot of thought. Who are we? Who, who makes this town what it is? And the one word that I kept returning to is family. You've heard, I, I wrote, you're going to hear, but you've heard tonight a common theme. Families who were attracted to this town because of our schools, some 50 years ago and some this year, who've me moved here from all over the country and in fact the world because of our schools. Children, who can return home to be closer to their parents because of our schools. So the question arises, do we really want to make a choice that will so negatively impact this amazing thing that draws people to this town, that directly impacts our property value, that makes our town special, and that educates the future generation that are going to need to solve world problems? This is our opportunity now to advocate for our children and not make the mistake again that forces them to advocate for themselves. We are a community of smart people with amazing experiences. Previous educators, planners, business leaders, and financial investors. And I truly believe we can solve our problems together. And if anything positive has come out of this situation, I believe that it is an engaged group of people who are desperately wanting to work together to solve this budget shortfall created by a lack of funding from the state to develop a self-sustaining plan moving forward, and I hope we can do that. So I urge you to vote yes, or push the budget through so that we, the voters, can make the decision. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Laura Danino, and I live at 7 Steeplebush Road. And I'll start by saying that I'm new here to Cape. So my husband and I moved here. We purchased a home a year ago this coming July. And we moved here primarily for all the things that people have already said. Good schools, great family values, a good place to raise our young family. Um, but I, I really started to honestly question that most recently, talking to people in the town and seeing who's in support of the school budget and who's not. And honestly, when you look at um, funding for the school, there seems to be there seems to be a real problem. 
And it doesn't take living here years and years to realize that. And what I'm hearing a lot is, just frankly, I'm hearing a lot of no. For instance, um, now maybe I will read what I, was, what I said, <laughs> that, um, well, when looking at raising, ra raising taxes, right? Nobody wants to pay more taxes, I get that. And no one wants to continually raise more property tax. So continually raising property tax, well, that's no. Well, where else can we look for money? We can look for m more funds from local businesses or more businesses. And what I've come to realize here in Cape is that a lot of new businesses isn't necessarily what we want. We don't want the super well much of the world, which I get. We want to keep our small town feel. So revenue from new businesses, that seems also in my mind to be another no. And then you look at, okay, where else can we get funding for school? Well. We can look to Fort Williams, right? We can look for paying people to park, which would have minimal impact on the residents of the town because like we talked about last week, for just a couple dollars a year, they could get a town pass. And we could get a lot of revenue from that or maybe we could get revenue, I don't know, from the $25 lobster rolls, right? <laughs> but again, it seems like the answer there is no too because what I've heard from other residents is that even if we do raise money at Fort Williams, most likely that money will not funnel back to the school. That's what I've heard, that money will funnel back to Fort Williams. So again, it's a no for our schools. So my question here is, is that when is it gonna be a yes, right? Because folks, we can't keep saying no to everything. So when is it gonna be a yes? Is it gonna be a yes for this school budget as it is now? And more importantly, can it be a yes for everybody working together to come up with uh, creative solutions for funding in the future? I know for myself, I'd gladly volunteer my time to work on a committee that was proposed earlier for folks to come together to work through this so that we're not at this same place again next year and the next year and the next year. So. I hope it's going to be a yes. I hope it's going to be a yes moving forward for our town, for our property, and for our children. Thanks. Thank you. Hi. Um, I have a con contextual little handout for the counselors. I have seven copies, so I might be a little bit short, but I'll... Um, does this work? Um, so I'm Janet Villiotti, for those of you who don't know, and um, <laughs> I've uh, made some comments at past meetings, so um, many of you have heard them or have heard about some of the stuff that I've um, been looking into. But anyway, I live at 7 Montgomery Terrace, and I just want to say that standing here tonight, this attendance is amazing, and this is truly to me what democracy looks like. I have never been to a meeting in our town that has been so well attended and I think everyone making the time tonight during Little League and lacrosse season and all the stuff our kids are involved in this time of year is really remarkable. So I'm really glad to see so many people engaged and present. Um, so what I prepared to say, um, Harold, uh, Harold Patius, a respected citizen and a former Cape School Board Chair, stood here two weeks ago at this microphone, and he spoke very eloquently about the importance of appearances in conducting public business. I will not pretend to have a fraction of his gift for public speaking, but I wish to echo his sentiment. Municipal business, including administration of our schools, should be conducted, with very few exceptions, in public, openly, transparently, and responsibly. When a citizen dedicates enormous amounts of time and effort into putting together an in-depth factual report that raises troubling issues around how school business is conducted, answers are required promptly and publicly. If there is nothing to hide and these concerns are unfounded, why has the joint workshop that Chair Council Chair Sullivan called for a month ago not taken place? Why refuse a quick opportunity to take care of these issues once and for all? While I appreciate Ms. Hubbs putting together a response to my memo and actually emailing me a copy and agreeing to present at the uh, school board meeting tomorrow evening, um, I was under the impression that Superintendent Coulter would be doing that. Um, I got an email in April that, that said so, but I hope that um, there, are some, there are some further answers that come out of that. Um, but it's still not a joint workshop, which is what was originally called for. And I just want to make that point. 
because a month has passed since my memo was sent to all of our elected officials and they were able to find time on short notice for an emergency joint workshop to discuss a school renovation bond issue that hasn't actually been vetted by anyone and still the contextual issues about how our tax dollars have been spent over the last few years in particular and how business is being conducted remain unanswered. 31 executive sessions in a year and 24 the year prior does not appear to be transparent. Paying a quarter million dollars to buy out administrators' contact, contracts last year doesn't appear very fiscally responsible. Mrs. Filiotti, your time is up, so if you could wrap up your comments, please. Uh, <clears throat> altering Principal Shedd's projected enrollment numbers for the high school, which was brought to light at last week's workshop, does not appear to be transparent either. And engaging a parade of consultants at a cost of 3000 plus per day does not appear to make financial sense. Taken together, counselors, I ask you, how does this appear to you? How can anybody of elected officials, given all these unresolved issues, authorize the proposed school budget? I implore you to hold the joint workshop before the school budget vote on June 12th. Thank you. Thank you. Rob Hubbs, 18 Belfield Road. So it's, it seems pretty clear that this, uh, the, the current budget is not an increase in ask over uh, prior funding levels for the school. And it's pretty clear why, because the state cut $900,000 approximately from the budget. So if we don't make up that amount of money, then the schools don't have the resources that they normally have, which is at a very basic level. And therefore, the quality will suffer. Um, so clearly, I think that if we value our schools, we have to support the budget despite this difficult situation. I also want to say that as a husband of a school board member and as somebody who knows a lot of people on the school board, they work incredibly hard. I don't know who works harder, the town council or the school board, but it's a ton. <laughs> it's volunteer. It's an extreme amount of time. If you're interested in running and doing the work, you might want to look into it. <laughs> um, and I've also heard, you know, creative concepts around how to reduce the budget uh, for the school, such as larger class sizes. I've heard that stated several times. I work in a hospital. We used to have wards that held 10 or more patients at a time. We don't do that anymore because it's a bad idea and it doesn't work. Um, but the, the people on the school board put in an unbelievable amount of time. They're extremely dedicated and they have no ulterior motives and they're talented, smart people. And I have to say that the memo that has been circulated uh, is couched in concern, but in my opinion is a blind side and is inaccurate, it's insulting to the board, and I think it's damaging to the schools. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Thomas Ash. I live at 14 Stonegate Road. Uh, my family and I are also newcomers to Cape Elizabeth. We moved here just at the end of last July. So I thought I would perhaps offer an outsider's perspective. We moved here from Montgomery County, Maryland, where, as you may know, the schools are nationally renowned. It's a little bit different situation. They serve over 160,000 students. So 100 times the size of the Cape School District. They also outspend Cape by about $1,500 per student per year. But I did some homework today and I looked at performance. Cape's graduation rate is better. The test scores achieved by Cape students are better than in Montgomery County. And I can tell you from personal experience that the quality and responsiveness of the special education services in Cape schools are better than they are in Montgomery County, Maryland. Given all that, no, I don't like to see my taxes go up any more than anybody else. But I feel that I can trust the Cape School Board and the Cape Schools with my tax dollars and with my children. So with that, I would urge you to send this budget forward to the voters. Thank you. Thank you.
I'm shorter, sorry. <laughs> uh, my name is Colin Atwood. I'm from Five Susan Road. Uh, I'm from Cape Elizabeth. Um, one of the things that um, struck me when I found out that there was actually a debate going on, um, and it's perfectly fine to debate. I think it's important that we consider the fiscal implications of raising taxes. Uh, but if you look at how much we've asked um, in a raise, about 3% or so, right? Uh, and you look at other districts, definitely in the area, let alone anywhere in the state, that's about the same increase. Um, almost all of it to health expense, right? I mean, that's a big, big part of why it's so much more expensive for education. Last 10 years, it's gone up considerably. We're pushing 1.4 billion this year. 1.4 billion is the highest we've ever spent in the state of Maine uh, on the state budget. It's not easy for the people who decided to um, make big changes to the algorithm that goes to where money goes. Uh, if you've ever been to Northern Maine and gone to the, the state of education in some of the smaller districts, uh, there's a reason I live here. And that sucks a lot for people who live in Maine. And it's not fair that just because you don't live in a town that clearly has a huge advantage uh, the amount of money that we get from taxation from the fact that we live on the ocean, right? It's ridiculous that we live where we live. And considering that, we actually don't really pay that much in taxes. Uh, it's surprisingly lower when you consider other towns and cities that live on the ocean, on the eastern seaboard. Uh, we're not that high comparatively. So a 3% increase isn't really that big a deal now. $900,000 sounds like a lot. Um, sounds like a lot to a town in northern Maine but not to Cape Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good evening. My name is Ann Carney. I live at 21 Angel Point Road. Um, I have three adult children who attended schools here in Cape Elizabeth and they received a, a high quality education. But I feel like you've heard a lot about the quality of education tonight and I want to talk about the quality of the process that led to the proposed budget. Um, the, the process involved seven um, workshops with the school board. They, those workshops each included a lot of time for citizen participation as well as thorough explanation of the work that the school officials had done to um, reach a budget that maintained the quality of our education without including anything extra in light of the changes in the state funding. There were also public forums that gave the public an opportunity to understand the budget. And then finally, there were town council workshops that really um, represented a compromise, not just with regard to the school budget, but other things, you know, for example, the, the conservation project involving Robinson Woods Three. So the budget that's before you now is really a compromise that was the result of a high quality process. And I would ask that you support the budget, approve it as it's submitted and before the town council, um, including the, the school board, which I think the school budget element um, really does meet the needs of our community in maintaining our quality education system. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Maura Bazzoni and I live at 8 Leiden Lane, like many people here. Um, my husband and I moved our young family here for the town and for the reputable school system. I am an elementary school teacher in South Portland and have taught in schools in Fairfax County, Virginia, Washington, D.C., New York City, and now South Portland. I agree with so many of the points tonight, but I want to try to articulate some of the intangibles I see. I've heard a lot of discussion about this town struggling to find its identity, and I think the school system is actually a reflection of who we are and what we value. Cape Elizabeth schools have always maintained class sizes below the state maximum. Cape Elizabeth has not always bowed to test scores and rankings to guide their educational decisions and direction. When I think of staff cuts, be it classroom teachers, admins, ed techs, um, or special ed, I think I want to share two personal stories that I look at under the lens of student mental health and the student engagement, two issues that are on the forefront of education today, especially in light of um, social media and getting kids to really engage in their schools. My daughter, our eldest, is a kindergartner at Pine Cove School, and recently I suggested she miss school a day on a Friday so we could start a family vacation earlier. Eliza was adamant that we could not do that. Her teacher had planned for her to be there. She had, was working on a snowman in art. 
She had fourth grade book buddies, she would miss her friends, and it was Friday, and it was cheesy bread day, and I clearly <laughs> had no idea what I was talking about. While this is a cute anecdote about a five-year-old, my point is that she at five feels personal connections to her school. These connections are not an accident. They are the result of a highly professional and hardworking and loving and caring school staff at Pond Cove. She fe also feels, like these are the other lessons our kids get at school. She also feels accountable to her teachers and classmates. I hope that she always feels this engaged with the Cape Elizabeth School Department. She is a passionate learner, I guess as much as you can be at five. Um, but what she was mentioning was not standards, rigor, proficiency. And imagine what that looks like to an older student. I am not saying that the teachers could not handle a increased workload or a higher class size. I'm asking if we really want them to. Do we want to cut the one position that gets one kid out of school, in the, gets one kid to school in the morning, that gets that one teenager out of bed? And how can we possibly make that decision for someone else's child? Do we want to increase the amount of students each teacher is responsible for helping reach their full potential? Is academic proficiency really the only goal of our schools? Again, we have some fantastic professional educators, but that does not make sense. It does not make sense to assume that nothing would change with increased class size, caseloads, or daily loads. Our schools are currently structured to support our students academically and emotionally. Let's not go backwards. My other point of reference is I was the Cape Elizabeth field hockey coach for two years. Our record my first year was 0 and 14. I have experienced as a coach as a college, high school, middle school, and t-ball level now. Excuse With, me, your time is okay. up, so if you could wrap up your comments, All I'm please. saying is we talk about home values and test scores, and there's something else in this town that we shall be proud of, which is our high school students. They are representing us so well in the world, and I was not going to speak until they all got up today, and they are. That's what, that's what we're here for. They are our pride and representing our town so well. So thank you. Thank you. Hi there. My name is Ken Lane. I live at Five Beacon Lane. I've lived in Cape Elizabeth for 35 years. I intend to vote for the budget, but let's don't kid ourselves. This is a body blow to our citizenry. And if I were the finance officer of the school, I would do four things. First off, the unallocated fund, which is kind of the escape valve for unanticipated expenses, which if the town website was accurate, it's 449,000. I would put that all in for our taxes. If something does happen that's not budgeted and over budget, we'll start with the deficit next year, so be it. Secondly, I would ask why we're doing a 250,000 study, architectural study, you know, to improve the cafetorium and, and school and the front entrances and so forth, could that be deferred one year so we don't have to absorb that body blow? The third thing I would recommend is what Sarah Linden, who is not here, Sarah Linden, if you don't know, is one of the smartest people in the town. You should pay attention to what she says. She said, we need to like really go after the state funding. We have a revenue problem. We need to form a coalition. We need to elect people that have sharp elbows. I know a senator on the Education Committee. The formula does not come down from God on stone tablets. It gets tinkered with every year. We need to be in there, maybe with a coalition fighting. The fourth thing I would recommend, if I were the finance officer for the school, is let's not take people from surrounding towns that want to come to our schools that are not paying the tab. If the state isn't going to reimburse us, and I think we can assume that's the case, uh, we should like stop. I would stop, if I were the finance officer, I would recommend we stop it to the point of a lawsuit. Because as you know, there's a, a protocol for this and it goes up and blah, blah, blah. But we sh and I would like to know as a taxpayer, my taxes are going to go up 1300 bucks. It's a body blow when you're 74, and I enjoyed hearing from all the high school students. I can't even remember high school. <laughs> but you get my point. We can do things to reduce the impact on the citizenry. So I hope you would consider my remarks. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Jennifer DeSena and wasn't planning to even come here because I had an earlier meeting but got out early. Um, so if I'm redundant, I apologize. Um, I was on the school board for six years, late 90s, early 2000s, and so I know how hard that is. One thing that's interesting and I would encourage the um, town council to do as it was very aggravating being on the school board, presenting a budget, and nobody on the town council had been to one school board budget meeting or knew anything about other than what they saw on a piece of paper. Those school budgets do go through a huge review. I don't know if you've done that this year or not, but I would encourage you to do it if you have not. Um, I um, have lived in town for almost 30 years, um, have three kids that have gone through the system. I'm fortunate enough to pay taxes on two properties in town uh, as I'm a small business owner as well in town. Um, I come from this is from a, a little bit different scenario, um, two things. One, I sort of look at from my years on the school board and listening to some more elderly retired people um, talk about how the school board would work and how the kids are even handled and how monies are funneled back and forth. We, everybody in this room who's not retired pays into social security. To me, people who are paying property taxes who are retired are paying into our kids. I mean, it's kind of like a vicious, not a vicious circle, but a circle. <laughs> You know, I pay for you, I remember telling a neighbor that, I pay your social security, you're paying for my kids to go to school, and it all comes around in the wash. Um, and I think there's a real truth to that. The other thing is, as people in this town, we have taken, um, for good, better or worse, a stand that we like our town without a huge commercial base. The school is our biggest employer, and the school does not bring in any money. There is no money-making activity. We also want to have more um, open space. Well, that costs money as well. And if we make those decisions, then somewhere along the line, you have to say, this is more valuable to me than that. So if, if you're n not allowing um, any commercial base and keeping open space, which I would say is very important to me and a number of people in town, it's not just, then those are the choices you're making financially. Um, the other thing I want to bring up, um, because it's part of my business, is I do see a lot of younger people who grew up here moving back here. Um, they would be in, in Cape in a heartbeat. This market's a little bizarre, so it may take them a while, but... Mr. Um, Senator, your time is up. If you could wrap up your comments, yeah. please. Anyway, I notice a lot of people, if they come to me to purchase a home, there's three towns they're looking at. They're looking at Cape, Falmouth, and Yarmouth. And I would say that that is so important to people, and I think if they had a first choice because of the size of Cape, uh, versus the other towns, not so much Yarmouth, but Falmouth really growing. This is where they're focused. And what happens is property values, because we have good schools, remain high. And so again, that's kind of a reimbursement for taxes. Thank you, thank you. Hi, I'm Barbara Powers, 5 Fox Hill Road. And in full disclosure, I recently came off the school board, so I also appreciate the enormous number of hours that go into working on this budget, both from the board and the council. I'm also a retired superintendent from a neighboring district and now work in a very tiny part-time role as a superintendent and principal out on an island school, so that's kind of fun. Um, it's come as no surprise to you that I personally uh, support this budget as it is. I, I trust the superintendent, the administrative team, the school board to have been very respectful bringing this budget forward, knowing how much of a loss we took in general purpose aid this year. And in my full experience with all of them, that is a primary thought in their minds. 
I think that our kids and staff deserve no less than continued excellence in this school. And in another part of me really hopes that our new superintendent, who will be joining us July 1st, would then have a chance to come in with fresh eyes and look at the programs and have a solid budget behind her as she weighs uh, priorities going forward. So I'd like to support Donna in her uh, new role with us. Now I'm gonna put my senior citizen hat on and, and speak pragmatically about this budget. First of all, as Jen was just saying, um, I really want my property values to stay high. I think that um, based on our reputation, and as she says, and I totally agree, Southern Maine is very competitive, and CAPE needs to and wants to for many good and solid reasons, but pragmatically for property owners, we want to be a top three school in this state and remain there. Um, the third thing that I wanted to talk about, though, is something that has occurred to me, uh, could be important for you to consider. I appreciated the gentleman talking about the body blow, that even though our budget increase is small because of the general purpose aid, the tax hits pretty high this year. It will cost me $1,000, and that's a lot of money. Um, but what happened this year is as our property tax increased, 8%, I mean, our, um, sorry, our property valuation increased 8% and a slight 1% decrease in enrollment, we finally are at the point where we're considered a minimum receiver district. That's sort of the bottom rung of the ladder, folks, where we join probably 80 plus other districts in the state of Maine who have very high property values. And right now our formula for state funding is based on property value. So we've hit that rung that says, okay, we're gonna fund you at X percent going forward. We'll throw you nibbles when we can. They raised the rate of special education subsidized dollars from 33 to 40% this year. But we're not gonna get body blown again. We are there now. We are at a place where we can plan forward. Where I am completely in favor, as a senior citizen, of taking a hit this year, knowing that that's putting us in a place that feels stable. Mrs. Going Powers, forward. your time is up. If you could wrap up your comments, yep. please. That's all I wanted to say. I think that knowing that we can plan our budgets now based on where we are as a minimum receiver um, makes a great deal of difference to our seniors. Thank you. Thank you. My name is uh, Jim Clark. I live at 350 Ocean House Road. My wife and I moved here five years ago. We have no children in the school district. We are huge believers in the notion of community. And our observations, having moved here from McLean, Virginia, and the Fairfax County school system, is that community and the education of you know, the students in the community is paramount. I grew up in a small town in Ohio, not unlike Cape, a combination of farm and commerce. And there's just no question in my mind that this proposal that, that's been put through and so hard to work on should be put forward for a vote. Now, there's no doubt in my mind also that there are some issues and some opportunities to either change what's been proposed for future years, and Barbara's comment about having hit that rung from a property value point of view, something I didn't realize, makes a lot of sense to me. But the thing that I really want to come back to on behalf of myself and my wife, who are both volunteers in the community, is that there's no substitute for the willingness and the ability of a town like this to come together as it has, put forward a budget, let the citizens vote, and then look to see what we're gonna do to improve the process or build committees and pursue the state for the future. The time has come. I know it's a part of the process. I support it, my wife Ann does, and I thank you for your time. Thank you. 
Good evening. My name is Maureen Clancy. I live at 11 Hemlock Hill Road. I've been a resident of Cape Elizabeth for 20 years now. I have two boys in the system. I'm president of the Cape Elizabeth Football Boosters and a member of the Cape Diversity Coalition. I believe very much in our town and our community, our schools, and everybody in this town who supports what we do. I'm incredibly impressed by the students who spoke tonight. My only regret is there were no boys <laughs> speaking. <laughs> I support the budget and the feasibility study. I believe that our schools deserve small sizes, a language program that begins at the earliest ages because the research shows that's what's most important, teaching a foreign language earlier the better. I believe that we should um, have the breadth of classes offered that we have in our high school to encourage and en engage all of our students. I believe we need safe, maintained, supported facilities to support all of our programs that our schools have to offer. I also support um, Susan, Susanna Hubbs' recommendation that we look together, to work together with the town council to see how we can change our tax base, improve our uh, taxable income. But I think at this point, my family, we already pay close to $10,000 a year in taxes to this town. Would I rather pay a little bit more? It's better than that than to risk the investment I've already made to not support our schools. This must go forward. I urge you to put it forward. I'll do whatever I can to support you in the town. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Hello, my name is Bill Gross from uh, 7 Seaview Avenue. <coughs> I'm here tonight because uh, I, I don't think the problem with our budget is caused by the state reducing the funds this year. But rather, it's been building for 15, 20 years. Now, my children graduated from, went through the whole CAPE system and graduated in 1999 and 2002. And both of my children had Dr. Efron as a physics teacher. And I retired from engineering about eight years ago, <clears throat> and for the past eight years I've been volunteering in Dr. Efron's physics class. So I'm very, in fact, I saw some of his students, ninth graders, talking to you tonight who did a terrific job. Although, I am going to tell him when I see him on fr uh, Wednesday that none of his students said that physics was their favorite subject. <laughs> so beware of when you take your circular motion test on Monday. <laughs> But anyway, I'm in a relatively unique position. <clears throat> we have a terrific, wonderful physics class uh, uh, program right now in Dr. Efron. But we had a wonderful physics program in, in Dr. Efron in 1999 and in 2002. But what's changed in those years? The thing that bothers me that's changed is back then, we had a ratio of professional staff in, in 1999, 2000 year. For every... Uh, 12 students, we had one professional staff. Now in this past year, for every nine and a half students, we have one professional staff. So you say, well, what the dip, but just of some ratio, some number. The students might be bored on, a, on solving a numerical problem in physics with them. So two different ratios, what the heck? Well, this ratio, if we had the same 12 to one ratio this year, that we had back when my kids were in school taking the same excellent physics course from Dr. Efron, if we had that same ratio now of 12 to 1 instead of 9.5 to 1, our budget would be $2.5 million lower now than what we're spending. Now, if we were getting a better, a better education from our children, I'd say that's terrific. We, we spent the $2.5 million per year and we got a great deal. But my opinion, in, in my narrow area, physics, in my opinion, the quality of the education that the students receiving today, the students who are sitting out here in the audience and spoke to you, they're getting a wonderful education in ninth grade honors physics. But it's not any better than the wonderful education my kids got from Dr. Efron in 1999 and 2000. So that two and a half million dollars isn't buying us anything. That's the, cause, that's the reason, that ratio going, uh, going down is the cause of our budget problem. So the only solution I can see is if the, the town council 
and the school board get together and agree, okay, this problem's been building for 15 or 20 years. Mr. Gross, your time is up, so if you could wrap up your comments, please. So the solution would be if both the school board and the town council agree to commit to reduce the, the number of professional staff by one employee per year for the next 15 years. 15 years from now, the, the parents out here in the audience would be, be looking at a budget that's $1 million less than it is now. Thank, Thank you. you. I'd like to remind the audience to please not comment, and it makes it hard for us all to hear, but we want to remain respectful of everyone, and uh, let us all remember that we welcome not only diversity, but diversity of opinion. So thank you very much for your patience and your respectful civility. Thank you. Hi, my name is Chuck DeRusso. I live at 31 uh, Brentwood Road in Cape. Uh, my wife spoke earlier. Uh, I'm not going to go over the same ground that she went, but I, I am a retired uh, engineer myself. Uh, uh, and so uh, I'd like to speak uh, to the comments that we just heard. Uh, I was an engineering manager, and we always did a cost-benefit analysis uh, for major uh, uh, projects that we would we, that we would consider. I can't think of a more uh, important benefit than the future of America. And we're talking about Cape students getting the best education. And I think if the ratio was seven to one, would probably be better. I think that it would be an, an improvement. So I don't think that we want to be looking backwards to saying, well, we got away with 25, you know, where I went to school, it was, it was uh, there were way more students than, than faculty than there is in Cape, okay? And I'm a, I'm a product of public education, and I firmly believe that, that America needs to have public education. So. I think that I, I'm, you know, I am retired. I am willing to take, I want to take the hit uh, because when I do a cost benefit analysis of this proposed budget, I also address my hierarchy of values. And my hierarchy of value is kids first, not not my money, not my Social Security, not my Medicare, kids first. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Hello, I'm Lynn Beasley, and I live at One Spoon Drift Lane. And I thought we needed a little more balance, age balance, than this discussion. Um, so I am here. Uh, we moved to Cape Elizabeth some eight years ago from Brookline, Massachusetts. Now Brookline is to Boston as sort of Cape Elizabeth is to Portland, which we didn't know at the time when we moved. We just had a lovely house and that worked well. But since we've been here, it is a lovely community and we're thrilled to be here. I, in the last two meetings, have heard several people say, my kids grew up in the school system, and they did perfectly well, and it was really good, so why aren't we just the same? And the reason we are not is that there are different laws that say you have to have different things. And also, you can be sure that when your kids, whoever they were, grew up in the system, there was a battle with the school budget. It always is, you know, the, the, we're, the school committee, whoever it is, is trying to do the best for our kids, and the town is trying to do the least for our pockets, and so we, it, it's always a conflict. Um, but I do think, in Brookline, we certainly learned where people come from around the world to come to Brookline for their schools, and the school, school bills were very high, but in the end, when we sold our house, we got all that money back. And I think that you all need to think of that. You know, you're thinking now you're gonna pay, you know, three, four thousand dollars more than you did. But when you sell your house in 10 years, you're gonna get back $50,000. That was a hell of an investment. And I think you need to think about that. And I support the budget. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> I'm Chuck Carpenter, I'm from Six Manor Way. And I'm afraid that my experience volunteering in the Cape School System wasn't quite as interesting as yours. Um, 
As a doctor, I had the opportunity to sit in the second grade, and I was just as afraid of the teacher as my son was. <laughs> but what was interesting to me, can you guys hear me? What was interesting to me is that I realized that school has changed a lot. It is a lot harder to be a public school teacher than it was when I went there. Okay. The old days of one, one teacher standing up and saying, we're going to learn about the solar system, is over. There's a lot more work to be done. There's a lot more that's required of the teachers. It would be awesome if you could just walk in and say, I know a lot of physics. I'm going to teach you guys. I'm going to make you great students. That can still happen, but we still have to follow the rules. And the rules have changed. And what is required now is different than what was required when I went to school and when my kids went to school. Okay, speaking of my kids, okay, I've become one of them. <laughs> my kids have aged out, okay? So right now, any, money, any taxes I pay go to somebody else's kids. And you know something? I'm not doing it out of altruism. I'm doing it so my property values will go up, okay? I absolutely support the budget. I'm so proud of the school board. I didn't go through the budget. I don't know what's good, I don't know what's bad, but I'm telling you, I believe in them. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tara Smopless, 1175 Shore Road. I'm gonna be really brief, I have nothing prepared, I wasn't even gonna come up here, but after the students came up, and actually my daughter, um, who I'm so proud of, who came up, spoke as a seventh grader, who this was totally her thing. She didn't come to us, she met with her teachers, she learned about the budget, she was passionate about it, and I'm so proud of her, and I'm so proud of this community that I could not not say something. Um, wow, we moved here eight years ago from Toronto, and I always knew what a great place this was, but tonight I'm feeling the love. <laughs> love it. Um, what an amazing community, and I think that our children proved tonight what a great education system that we have, and I'm just going to finish by saying I really hope that you push the budget through as is, because we live in a great place, and the children are our future, and let's support them. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, Tim Thompson, Six Pine Ridge Road. I've missed a lot. I just actually got here. I was at another meeting. We, were, we had a governor debate across the way at the high school. Um, interestingly, Chris, one of the questions they were asked is to try to explain the EPS formula. <laughs> <coughs> uh, and, but uh, that, is a, that is kind of a mystery to all of us. But one of, the only thing I really wanted to support tonight is uh, I know this, I, I, watched it, I watched it on television the other night when the, uh, the folks, the, the uh, architects and the planners from Colby came in and it seemed like the only thing that really changed from their presentation in January was about the, the safety for the kids. And what I'd really like, because I, I, I do think one of the things we need to think about in this difficult budget year is to maybe think about pushing that study off and, and pushing that building project off a year, uh, getting the things we need to get done this, in this budget. But I, I would suggest one of the things we might be able to, because it does seem like it's really the safety, and everybody in town wants our, our students to be safe. So what I'd suggest is whether uh, it's in the school budget and probably needs to be considered in your budget, let's do that resource officer now and get the, get the middle school protected now, get, the, get Pond Cove protected now, and take that safety issue off the, take that off the table for the time being Get, get the work and get a good committee in town put together so we can get 100% of people behind whatever renovations do need to be uh, uh, put together. Because we do, we do know there needs to be th some things changed. When that middle school Pond Cove was built, it seemed like a great idea, great approach to when it was, but there's obviously things that need to be done. But if we could get the safety issue off the table and get these parents feeling that their, their little ones are, are safe when they're at school, I think that'd go a long way. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak during the public hearing? Anyone at all? Okay, seeing no one, I close the hearing.
The meeting is not over. <laughs> well, counselors, we might as well take a quick recess. sit down and, and be quiet, be quiet so that we can continue our meeting. We are not finished yet. We have other agenda items to, to deal with. Thank you. It's suggested that we table items 71 through 76, which are the municipal budget and the school budget, until a week from tonight, May 14. It's been our usual practice. Uh, and is there a motion to do that? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any, discu any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. So moving on, moving on to item number 77, the Cape Elizabeth Rescue Fund budget. Um, uh, would uh, the town manager like to address this? I would be happy to, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, this evening we have on this item agenda, on the, sorry, this item on the agenda is the, uh, these are the, the next funds that we have are the special funds in succession. Uh, this would be the first of, of, the, of the number and this is specifically for the rescue fund. This uh, would identify for fiscal year 2019 approved expenditures of 539200 and revenues of $300,000. And this is for provision of rescue services to the town of Cape Elizabeth. Thank you. Um, is there a motion to approve this uh, item number 77 for the Cape Elizabeth Rescue Fund budget? Councilor Garvin, is there a second? Second. Councilor Penny Jordan, any discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous, 6-0. Item number 78, Cape Elizabeth Sewer Fund budget. Again, if the town manager would just tell us about this. I would be happy to, Madam Chairman, thank you. Uh, this is the sewer fund budget that we have, and then again, one of the special funds that we do have. Uh, this would show an approved expenditures for $2,030,598 and approved revenues of 2,000, I'm sorry, $2,032,300. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve item number 77, the Cape Elizabeth Sewer Fund Budget? Councilor Randall, is there a second? Councilor Straw, any discussion? Uh, just uh, dotting I's, crossing T's. I'm sure it's right, but just in case. So when I look at the item for the sewer fund total, it's different than the subtotal. The number we have appears to be the subtotal. Is that what it's supposed to be? 
in it. Very likely probably is, and I don't know what I'm doing, so <laughs> I just noticed a discrepancy. Thank you. So Matt's looking, looking at that right now. <clears throat> On the, uh, yes, on the bottom is the, is the sewer fund total, which is the two, sorry. Uh, oops, I've already slid down my page. Apologize for putting you on the spot here. Nope, that's perfectly fine. Um, oh, it's be it looks like it's because yeah, the, it pulls in the uh, personnel subtotal as well. Yes, yeah, exactly, the personnel subtotal is up above, and that's... So that's, that's separate uh, from this, or is, should it be included? It should be, let's see, what do I have, 2030. Zero, zero. I think we are looking at two million forty-six. Sorry. All right. So yeah. we should be moving for that number instead. If we could, yes. Thank yeah. you, Councillor Straw. Uh, I apologize for the typo. Um, I apologize for not catching it earlier. <laughs> uh, I appreciate it. It would be uh, if if the council would be so kind to uh, amend the motion to two million forty-six thousand two hundred and one. So moved. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. I appreciate right. the catch. Thank you. Any further discussion on that item? Need a second on that. Amendment. Second. I'll right. second that. Council, well, actually, Councilor Caitlin Jordan was the first to second. Second the amendment. This? Yes. Did you, you just seconded it? Oh, sure, but I <laughs> didn't think I did, but I will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Okay. Any further discussion on the amended motion? All right. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Item number 79, the Cape Elizabeth Spurwink Church budget. Uh, <clears throat> there again, I'll ask the town manager to, to introduce it. Thank you, Madam Chairman. This would be for the operations of the Spurwink Church. Uh, this would have ex uh, approved expenditures of $10,491 and approved revenues of $1,200. Is our motion to approve item number 79, the Cape Elizabeth Spurwink Church fund budget? So moved. Councilor Straw, is there a second? Second. Councilor Caitlin Jordan. I'll second it, but just a quick question. Sure. On the last one, we had a motion for one number, we had a second, then we made an amendment, and I second the amendment, and we made a vote. We uh, oh, voted we to amend the number. Don't we need to then go back and vote you do. the motion? Yep. Just procedurally. Yep. Uh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Yeah. So that's a point of order. So we'll suspend our discussion on item number 79. Go back to 78. Item number 78. And would you repeat that again? Just so we need to vote on 78 as, as amended. amended. As amended. All right. Can I have a motion to vote on item number 78 as amended? No, we don't we just need to vote. We, we just need to vote. vote. Okay. Yep. All those in favor? Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, back to item number 79. Uh, we have a motion and it's seconded. Is there any discussion on item 79? All those in favor? It's approved. Item number 80, the Cape Elizabeth Riverside Cemetery Fund budget. Uh, again, if the town manager will introduce it. Thank you, Madam Chairman. This is for the uh, operation of the Riverside Cemetery. Uh, this would be for fiscal year 2019 with approved expenditures of $66,589 and approved revenues of $67,000. Excuse me, is there a motion to approve item number 80, the Cape Elizabeth Riverside Cemetery Fund Budget? Councilor Garvin? So moved. Second. Is there a second? Councilor Caitlin Jordan, any discussion? All those in favor? It's approved. Item number 81, the Portland Headlight Fund budget. Again, if the town manager will introduce this item. It's a much larger budget item. <laughs> uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. This is for the operation of the Portland Headlight Fund. Uh, this would have approved expenditures in 2000, uh, fiscal year 2019 of $628,035 and approved revenues of $636,000. Is there a motion to approve item number 81, the Portland Headlight Fund Budget? Councilor Randall, is there a second? Councilor Straw, any discussion? Councilor Garvin. I, I yeah? can't remember, Matt, from when we talked about this during our workshops, but what was the reason for the reduced expected revenue 
year over year. It's just a forty thousand dollar difference, but I. Do you, do you recall? Yeah. And it's just, I'm only asking because of all the other attention that we're yeah. putting on the fort right now. But and I, I didn't know if the, it, I believe that's what uh, uh, was revenue estimated by by the director as to what they forecast for sales. This past year was a big was a large year, but uh, if I can get to that page, it'll just take me a moment. Sorry. I couldn't remember if Gene made any reference in the forecast to potentially having less traffic and less customers, that, that's what I'm getting to. Um, I, the, my recollection was that there was a cruise line or a cruise ship that yep. she did not that's anticipate right. that would be coming this year that came last year, and so that's why she forecasted a drop in revenue. So yeah. something that did come last year and wasn't coming. It's not coming yet. Right. One of the, uh, one of the scheduled trips is not okay. going to be Thanks. Yep. arriving. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any, any other questions or discussion? All those in favor? It's approved. Item number 82, Fort Williams Park Fund. The town manager would introduce this item, please. This is once again for the operation of Fort Williams Park. Uh, this is for projects that are performed down at the park as well as the revenues that are generated from there. Uh, this is mostly uh, for all the different uh, special projects that do take place at the park. Uh, this is having approved expenditures for fiscal year 19 of $173,246 and approved revenues of $199,800. And just for clarification, uh, this is for the, this is the Fort Williams Advisory, Advisory Committee's yeah. budget. Yeah. So that's, that's why this is separate from Fort Williams operations, in case anyone's wondering. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to approve item number 20, I'm sorry, item number 82, Fort Williams Park Fund? Councilor Straw? So moved. Is there a second? Councilor Randall? Any more discussion? All those in favor? It's approved. Item number three, Cape Elizabeth Infrastructure Improvement Fund Budget, which I think is our smallest <laughs> line item budget. <laughs> I'm happy to introduce you, Madam Chairman. <laughs> this is zero expenditures and zero revenues, uh, but it is it is part of the budget. So, uh, in case we do need to have this again in the future, we'll we'll this is our bookmark, if you will. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Is there uh, a motion to approve item number three, the Cape Elizabeth Infrastructure Improvement Fund budget of zero dollars? Councilor Garvin, <laughs> is there a second? Councilor Penny Jordan. Any more discussion? All those in favor? It's approved. Item number 84, the Thomas Jordan Fund Budget. So, will the town manager please introduce this? I'd be happy to, Madam Chairman, thank you. Uh, this would be uh, for approved, uh, for actions that are provided by the Thomas Jordan Trust. Uh, the multiple areas that it provides assistance in to residents of the community when they are in need. Uh, this would have approved expenditures for fiscal year 2019 of $37,035 with approved revenues of $40,000. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve item number 84, the Thomas Jordan Fund Budget? I'm sure we have a Councilor Jordan who would probably like to make that motion. <laughs> Councilor Penny Second. Jordan? Second by Councilor Caitlin Jordan. Or is, is there any discussion? All those in favor? It's approved. And finally, uh, item number 85, the land acquisition fund budget. And again, if you will, uh, the town manager um, introduce this item. I'd be happy to, Madam Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, this would be uh, for fiscal year 2019. This would be uh, the function of the budget or the portion of the budget that would house the uh, expenditures in support of Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. Uh, you'll notice on this there is an uh, approved expenditures of $167,714 and approved revenues of $112,914. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve item number five, the land acquisition fund budget? Councilor Randall, is there a second? Second. Councilor Penny Jordan, any discussion? All those in favor? Okay, thank you. It's, it's approved. And we've now come to the end of our meeting.
I should ask I, uh, if there's any member of the public who would like to make a comment. We can entertain. No, oh, no one is interested. Could I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Councilor Caitlin Jordan, the second. Councilor Garvin, and all those in favor. We're adjourned. Thank you.